All right guys, let's go and have a look at this engine, eh? M54, we'll have a chat about some of the common problems. So okay, let's have a look. Now these engines came in 2.2, 2.5, 3 litre displacements. They put them in a lot of their cars. The 5 Series E39, E60s, the Z4s, Z3s, the E46s. They do have some common quirks, some common faults, but as long as you keep on top of everything on the front foot with all the maintenance, they're a very rewarding engine. So one of the biggest things to watch out for with these engines that will cause it to fail is the cooling system failing. So first off you want to make sure your expansion tank's in good shape. They can crack down the side when they get old. They're made out of recycled plastic, these things, from the factory. And they, um, with the heat cycles, expansion and contraction, they can crack sort of down the side along the length of it. So just make sure that's in good shape. If you've just bought the car, just put a new one in. And that also goes for the hoses, the upper and lower radiator hoses, the heater hoses, the water pumps, they can fail. The older ones had a plastic impeller. The later ones had a composite ones. I've never had a problem with the composite ones, but you can also get ones with a metal impeller. It's your choice, but they do fail. The thermostats, they can fail too. It's worth changing them out. They do fail quite regularly. They usually fail open. What it can cause is your engine to take a long time to warm up. So it's worth having a look at that also. And the radiator, the upper neck here with the hose clips on, they can crack with the heat cycles. It does happen over time. So if you just bought one of these cars, it's worth just putting a new expansion tank, new radiator, water pump thermostat, and the main hoses. And then you should be all set for at least a, about 80, 100,000 miles in seven or eight years. Also, there's the coolant temperature sensor down in the lower radiator hose there. They can leak, it's usually the O-ring. You can usually just whip it out, change the O-ring, and that's all good again. And the next thing to think about with the cooling system, not so common, but it does happen as these cars get older, is the fan and the fan clutch. Now the fan itself is plastic. These can start to crack over time and come apart. And when they do come apart, it can make a hell of a mess. It'll take your radiator hoses out, your belts, sometimes even the radiator. So just keep an eye on that, make sure it's in good shape. And also your fan clutch. Now this isn't so common that these will fail. They do usually go quite a fair distance, uh, beyond 150,000 miles. But again, just check that it's in good shape. Right now we'll move on to the common oil leaks. So first off, the number one culprit will be your valve cover gasket. This isn't too big a job to do. You've got the primarator gasket and also you've got the ones for your spark plugs in the middle there. Telltale signs of this leaking. Obviously, you'll see oil leaking down the front of the engine here. And the main one is just across your, especially over the back there, on top of your exhaust heat shields. So that's worth getting sorted before it gets too bad. Also your oil filter housing gasket, that's very common. Again, not a huge job to do. It's just this unit here has got to come out where it bolts to the side of the engine. There's a little moulded gasket in there. The gasket's super cheap. There is a bit of time involved, but it's not too bad a job. And then the other main one, as these engines get a bit older now, is the sump gasket. That is quite a labour intensive job, you've got to drop the subframe and everything, but it is worthwhile doing. Worth looking after these engines to keep them in good shape. And one of the other oil leaks to watch out for is your vanos solenoid. That's got an o-ring in there, it can go bad and leak. You'll see that dripping down onto the lower radiator hose usually. Very common, but super easy, super cheap to rectify that. Just an o-ring, get them from the dealer. And the same thing with your vanos solenoid here also. The other thing to watch out for is this Vanos hose here. Now the fittings themselves don't often leak, but what can happen is where the hose is crimped onto the end fitting here, they definitely can leak very common. You'll see that dribbling down the side of your engine there. It's worth changing out too. Next common problem is a crankcase ventilation system. So this is BMW's version of a PCV system. It's often called an oil separator also. You see the top hose for it here. Now this is like a little cyclone unit that sits right, up, right under the intake manifold there. It's got uh, a few hoses coming off it. Now what can happen over time is the hoses can fail. Most of them are plastic, they'll come apart, it can cause vacuum leaks, and also the thing can just get clogged up if you're running this car on short journeys through the city or whatnot in the winter time. You can get like a sort of mayonnaise white gunk. You'll often see it underneath your filler cap there. 
don't mistake it for a head gasket, it's not that, it's just moisture building up in the oil and this thing can't breathe properly, it can't drain back to the sump that great once it gets clogged. Now this can be quite an awkward job to replace this thing. I find the best way is to leave the intake manifold in place, I've managed to do it like that. Some people remove it, I feel like there's just too many steps involved, it's just easier to struggle on and get it done. It is doable, the main thing is one of the hoses that comes off the side of it and goes up to the intake manifold. It's like a 90 degree twist, so the best way is just to practice with that first before you get under there with it, when it while it's off the car, and just practice twisting it on because you'll be doing it with feel underneath the intake manifold. The rest of those is just clip on nicely, it's not a big deal. Uh, when you do take the old one out, take your dipstick tube out as well. It's probably likely that it's blocked with gunk, with old oil residue and moisture. So just give that a good blast out, some brake clean or something, make sure it's all clean and dry. Refit it with a new O-ring because the O-ring that goes into the sump on the old dipstick tube can cause oil leak, uh, can cause can cause vacuum leaks over time. So make sure you change that at the same time. So you've got the O-ring there, the CCV unit itself, which is down there, and then all the hoses. Once you've got that sorted, it'll keep you going for quite some time. Next up, we'll take a look at the Disa valve. Now, what this thing does is it's got a flap that goes into the intake manifold there and what it does is it'll convert the runners of the intake manifold from short to long so it lengthens them at low rpm to give you more torque and then it'll short them, shorten them at high rpms to give you more horsepower what can happen over time is the flap in here it's held together with a pin in the end it's just sort of wedged in there and what can happen is that can sort of wear and break loose over time and the flap can become sort of loose flapping around in there so it's not doing its job I should say at the age of these motors are getting now most of these engines will have this problem so it's worth just taking this out and having a look now a lot of people will tell you that you can lose the pin down in the engine that can't happen while it's in position because it's sort of pressed up against the plastic in there but the only time you'll lose it is when you're sliding out so just be real careful when you pull it out make sure you've got all the pieces there in your hand you can get a kit to repair it which has a shaft that goes all the way through screws in it's much more secure should be good for a, a lot longer it'll come with a new o-ring as well you'll have to scrape the old stuff out because it's just like a silicon uh, seal there so scrape that out put the new o-ring in and also the other thing that can fail on them is the actuator here the diaphragm can go in there so just check that that's working correctly before you put it all back together so you can rebuild them relatively cheap it's much cheaper than replacing the whole unit. Right, next thing we'll have a look at is the vacuum leaks. Now this is an issue that these engines suffered with even early on in their life. But as they get older it's even more and more of an issue because all the rubber hoses sort of age and crack with the heat cycles. If you do have a vacuum leak you'll be getting a lot of lean codes. Easiest way to check for them if you are getting leak codes is do a smoke test. But the best idea is to prevent that happening in the first place so it's worth just going through and replacing these rubber parts before you get the issue, before it becomes an issue. Now the first main culprit is the intake boots here. There's an upper and a lower, they're sort of clamped together in the middle there. Super cheap, just change them out. If you just bought one of these cars, just do it. It's not worth messing around with. It's not worth waiting until it becomes an issue. And then as we've already talked about, you've got the dipstick tube o-ring that can cause vacuum leaks, also the DESA o-ring there, definitely the CCV, the oil separator, if that's not been done that can cause vacuum leaks. If your valve cover is warped, I've never seen it myself but I've heard stories of them becoming warped over time, that can cause vacuum leaks. And then next off, right at the back of the engine, right over this side, you've got like three ports at the back. Now depending on which model you've got and which engine you've got, which type of car you've got, the oil, either all three will be capped off with little rubber caps. Now they can deteriorate over time, they're super cheap so it's worth getting some of them and replacing them. Just means whipping all this stuff off, it's not a huge job. And now some of them ports are used for certain things. Now this is a 3 litre engine, so in the muffler at the back we've got an exhaust uh, actuator flap that works off vacuum. So one of them hoses that actuates that comes off the back there and it just sort of swoops under there and then connects into a uh, plastic line. 
so just check that's not cracked it's worth replacing and then same at the back of the car there's a little rubber hose coming off the line onto the um, actuator so just check that that's not coming apart and the other port is usually used for hose that comes around the back here now a lot of these cars had a EGR pump this one doesn't have it you see this blacked off there normally it's got a big pump sat here you see a vacuum hose coming off and going around that way just check that out it's worth just replacing just any vacuum hose will do as long as it's the correct size and then last off these engines can sometimes suffer with misfires you'll get a lot of misfire codes now usually it's just the coils that are bad you'll normally get one that will drop out that's easy enough to change out another thing that a lot of people don't consider is the boots off the coils can age over time the rubber they can age they can crack and cause spark issues so when you come around to change your you know all six spark plugs just change them out as well they're cheap enough now if it's not the coil that's gone bad it can often be an injector it's very rare that you get problems with them they do take a long time to start going bad or getting clogged or whatever but it's worth checking them out the other thing to consider is your compression do a compression test on the engine uh, generally these engines aren't too bad though they're very reliable very robust and another cause that often gets overlooked now if you're getting misfire issues when you first start the car up from cold when it's been sitting overnight or for a certain length of time and you're getting a real sort of misfire and the car shaking and whatnot but then it eventually comes right as the car starts to warm up what it can be is the lifters um, over time they can get scored on the bores and they can uh, leak and what happens is they collect they bleed they bleed the oil off and they collapse sort of overnight when the car's been sat for some time and then when you start the car up with an hydraulic lifter it's sort of jumping around a bit and as the car warms up and that oil's getting pumped around the engine and the oil gets thinner it'll slowly fill up with oil and expand and then it'll come right so that can affect your valving that's quite an involved job to change them out but it can be an issue on these engines but overall they are a bloody good engine they're very reliable they're very robust one of the best BMW ever built fantastic to drive they're super silky smooth it's a perfect balance between performance and reliability and uh, and just general drivability perfect for a daily driver but they do get these small issues from time to time so like I say as long as you keep on top of it keep on the front foot with it all you'll get a lot of miles out of these engines and it'll serve you well it'll be super reliable okay hope this helped you guys out don't forget to like and subscribe I'm MTech Guy thanks for watching